Thank you for joining me on Primetime News. It's always an absolute pleasure to be in your company, giving you the latest happenings within and beyond Namibia. I'm Salima Shumwe Fileni Masipa. The aftermath of the recent Supreme Court ruling on same-sex marriages headlines tonight's bulletin. Prime Minister Sara Kuhongelwa Madila revealed on Tuesday in Parliament the government will introduce a bill regarding the same-sex marriage ruling. The bill aims at preventing the recognition of such marriages in Namibia. Let's listen in. The Ministry of Home Affairs and the Attorney General representing the government, both in the High Court and Supreme Court, oppose the appellant's cases principally on the basis that with due regard to the Namibian common law in Article 14 sub 1 and sub 3 of the Constitution and the previous Supreme Court judgment, what is known as the Frank case, same-sex marriages are not recognized in Namibia and therefore the two cannot qualify as spouses in terms of Section 2 sub 1c of the Immigration Control Act and thus they were under obligation to apply for necessary permits to enter and reside in Namibia. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, the Supreme Court majority judgment ruled and found that the Ministry of Home Affairs approach to exclude foreign spouses of Namibian nationals in same-sex marriages concluded in countries which recognize same-sex marriage from the beneficial exemption provided for under Section 2 sub 1c of the Immigration Control Act infringed the interrelated rights to dignity of the appellants in terms of Article 8 and <coughs> equality in terms of Article 10 of the Namibian Constitution. On to a rather unfortunate incident, a 50-year-old trial awaiting inmate on Tuesday allegedly committed suicide by hanging himself in a police holding cell at Koblenz in the Okakarara constituency. The Namibian Police Force Head of Community Affairs in the Oshodhanjupa region, Inspector Maureen Beha, told the Namibia Press Agency the deceased left behind a suicide note. More on this report. The Namibian Police Force, Nampol, Head of Community Affairs in the Oshodhanjupa region, Inspector Maureen Beha, told Namba the disease left behind a suicide note. The disease was alone in the cell during the time of the incident as other inmates were booked out for court appearances, she said. The inmate was in custody for two separate cases of rape which allegedly took place in Okamatapati in 2022 and in April this year. His next of kin were yet to be informed of his death and no foul play is suspected. In a similar incident, two female suspects were arrested in Oshakati on Tuesday for the alleged rape of a 22-year-old man. According to a crime report issued by the Namibian Police Force on Tuesday, two women aged 29 and 33 were arrested for the alleged rape of the 22-year-old man who is mentally disabled at the Omega village. It is suspected that the woman lured the victim from various shops to their house to engage in sexual acts with him on different occasions. The report indicated that the incidents allegedly occurred earlier this year, but there is uncertainty around the specific dates when it happened. The suspects have been arrested and are expected to appear before the Oshakati Magistrate Court on 8 June. Reporting for Primetime News, Diana Kauta. Moving on, Minister of Agriculture, Water and Land Reform, Kale Schletwein, earlier today announced the new members of the Meat Board of Namibia. The minister noted it being the first time post the COVID era that they are introducing a new board as per the prescriptions of the Public Enterprise Governance Act and the Meat Industry Act. He added that the appointment brings about new responsibilities as well as matters of governance to the fore. Ndamona Kanganjira filed this report. Over and above the, the powers of acquiring or selling movable property and immovable property, the, the requirement to be accountable, to be transparent in your actions, to do that in the public interest, those are all um, general powers that every board has. But the most important one for, for, for this is the powers 
through which you regulate the industry. That is the issuing of permits, the traceability, ensure the traceability of, of product. Um, you are also responsible for grading and through the grading price control. And that is not to get the lowest price, but that is to get the best price for the producer. Switching attention to the fisheries sector, Deputy Director of Aquaculture and Inland Fisheries at the Ministry of Fisheries and Marine Resources, Johannes Hamokwaya, says Namibia's National Plan for Action for small-scale fisheries launched in June 2022 to boost socio-economic growth faces hurdles due to insufficient funding. Hamokwaya revealed this while speaking to the media at Swakopmund on Tuesday on the sidelines of a workshop on developing a resource mobilization strategy. Our coastal-based reporter Isabel Bento filed this story. This is according to Johannes Hamkwaya, Deputy Director of Aquaculture and Inland Fisheries at the Ministries of Fishery and Marine Resources, who was speaking to the media at Swakopmund on Tuesday on the sidelines of a workshop on developing a resource mobilization strategy for the Namibia's National Plan of Action for Small-Scale Fisheries for 2022 to 2026. The plan of action recognizes the important role the small-scale fisheries sector plays in socio-economic growth and economic transformation. Hamkwaya stressed that the funding needed is not for small activities as the ministry has already worked at the sectorial level. These funds are necessary to scale up projects such as improving fish preservation and benefiting communities. The objectives of the workshop are for the ministry, partners and stakeholders to strategize and identify potential development partners who can contribute funding towards the implementation of the National Plan of Action. Stay tuned for the business segment. Welcome to Primetime Biz, your source for the latest business news. The Hrundrai Primary School in the Hartap region received four new classrooms and a storeroom from mobile telecommunications company MTC as part of its rural schools development project. Let's take a listen. Uh, but as MTC, we're making a commitment to say to every Namibian corporate and individual, we do not want to embark on this process alone. The any company, whether you are our competition or not, we are inviting you to come and join us on this project. And we will together hand over classrooms across the spectrum of Namibia. Please come and join us so that we can hold hands, put more money together. The more money there is, the more classrooms we can deliver so that we can nationalize this project and make sure that it creates the sort of required impact um, that it deserves. No longer can we afford 
and accept that our children, the future leaders of this country, must be taught under trees and under very, very windy conditions. It is our responsibility as Namibians to ensure that we protect them so that the country is in good hands once we leave this earth. Thank you very, very much. On to the mining sector, Deputy Minister of Mines and Energy Cornelia Shilunga expressed concern with the dissatisfactory level of local procurement in the mining industry despite its potential to improve the plight of previously disadvantaged Namibians. The minister made the remarks at the launch of Rossing Uranium's 2022 Sustainability and Performance Report in Vintuk on Monday evening. Our producer, Pietras Namadiko, sheds more insights. The minister made the remarks at the launch of the Rossing Uranium's 2022 Sustainability and Performance Report in the capital on Monday evening. According to Shilunga, it is crucial to empower the youth and previously disadvantaged when your mind is operating to invest in related sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing and tourism, among others. The Deputy Minister commended Ross and Uranium for the launch, noting that the Sustainability and Performance Report is an important component of any operational company's communication strategy and, when done correctly, can inspire confidence among stakeholders and reinforce a company's brand value. Ross and Uranium's Managing Director, Johan Kutsia, at the same event, said the mine contributed approximately 4.4% to the world's primary production during 2022, with Namibia now being the third largest primary producer of triuranium octocide globally, after Kazakhstan, which continues to dominate the market from its supply side, and Canada. Reporting for Primetime News, I'm Michael Madimba. This brings us to the end of our top news segment for tonight. Welcome to Sport Planet, the segment that unpacks all things sport for you. Football jolts the segment into action. Manchester City are on the brink of a historic treble as Pep Guardiola targets Champions League vindication in Saturday's final against Inter Milan. Inter stand in the way of City, matching the greatest ever achievement in English football by emulating Manchester United's class of 1998-1999 in winning the Premier League, FA Cup and Champions League in the same season. For Guardiola, a moment of personal validation awaits in Istanbul after his 12-year drought in the competition. The Catalan is widely regarded as the greatest coach of his generation with 11 league titles to his name in just 14 seasons in charge of Barcelona, Bayern Munich and City. But since winning the Champions League in 2011 for the second time in his first three years at Barca, Guardiola has suffered a series of agonizing European exits. Let's wait and see. Staying with football, the Brazilian Football Confederation has not given up on its pursuit of Carlo Ancelotti for the national team's vacant head coaching role, the entity's president said on Tuesday. 
The comments came despite Ancelotti's declaration last month that he intends to see out the remaining 12 months of his Real Madrid contract. Brazil's head coaching position became vacant in December when Adano Bacci, better known as Tite, stepped down following the team's World Cup quarterfinal defeat to Croatia. Stay tuned for the Sports Roundup. On that note, we have reached the end of the Primetime News Midweek Edition. Many thanks for tuning in. Be sure to join us again tomorrow for insights into the headlines. From myself, Salima Shimwe Feleni Masipa, and the entire creators behind the scene, it's good night.